and everyone so today we'll be doing section 16 3 and 16 4. this is on a fundamental theorem of line integrals and Green's theorem so everything we've done so far has been evaluate line integrals i want to let you know we've done them directly so that's when we use the word directly every line integral that we evaluate evaluate so far we evaluated these line integrals directly that means we did it was a line integral of vector field we did f dot dr we went from some value of t to another value of t in terms of everything was parametric we set it equal to f composed of rp and we did the dot product with r prime of t We've done everything direct. So that will always work. I want to point that out. I mean, we could do all line integrals directly. They always have this in that funny looking, you take this off here and they have a little C here. And keep in mind, these line integrals of the vector field find the work. It finds the work done by the vector field to move a particle along some path. Okay? Well, Section 16.3, fundamental theorem of line integrals, and then we're getting a 16.4 Green's theorem. These are like special theorems that make this work a lot easier in certain circumstances. So when, when can I use the fundamental theorem of line integrals? Well, they have this right here. We gotta make sense of this. So let's go back to like the fundamental theorem of calculus and stuff. Do you remember if you had like, uh, let's say this was a zero, and this is just some um, x here. And I got cosine of t squared dt. And I actually get the derivatives. This whole thing right here with respect to x. Do you know what it comes out to be? It's really simple. What's the answer? Because it has an integral symbol, now I'm actually going to get the derivative. We would just get the cosine of x squared. That would be the derivative of this expression, right? Because you got the integral, they call that the fundamental theorem of calculus. The fundamental theorem of calculus. But that was back in Calc 1. Well, this is very similar. What we're saying is, we can bypass all that math we were doing if we can realize we got this going on right here. I have f equal to del f. And that's the gradient of a function. So I'm going to give you a vector field. Here's one. Just some simple ones. And here's another one. It's all about whether or not the vector field is conserved. So that's the secret to 16.3. Look at the title, the fundamental theorem of line integrals. It's really all about conservative vector fields. And that's the topic right now. Conservative vector fields. If the vector field is conservative, then the line integral math problems are going to be really, really easy to compute. So, how can I find a conservative vector field? The whole idea is, think of this as what some fx, partial respect to x of some function, and this is the partial respect to y of some function. I'll put question marks. Does fxy equal fyx? That's my question for you. Does fxy equal fyx? In this case, what's the derivative of x? There's the x component. What's the derivative of this with respect to y? Just a one. What's the derivative of that with respect to x? That's just a one? Mm -hmm. Is it true? So in this case, I'm saying that this vector field right here is conserved. You know, it is? Yeah, because remember Clorer's theorem? If fxy equals fyx, right? That will always be true. So we're noticing that that means that there is some potential function. <laughs> There's a potential function, some function of x and y. Look at my notation. That was a vector field. There is some potential function of x and y that we can create 
where that's the partial with respect to x and that's the partial with respect to y. So did you notice I started with question marks here? I had question marks. I was like, I'm not sure if this vector field is conservative. All right? But as long as I check this, then I know it's conservative. So isn't that cool? What's the simple check to see whether or not a vector field in two-dimensional space is conservative or not? Whatever's here, I'll take the derivative with respect to what? Y, and see if it's equal to the of this with respect to what? X. X. That's all we got to check. Isn't that cool? Just simply to see one y doing this, to see if the vector field is conservative. Because if the vector field is conservative, I can use the fundamental theorem of line angles. It'll make maybe a 10-minute problem turn into a 30-second problem. Isn't that cool? So that's what it's all about. This section, I know they call it fundamental theorem of line angles, but it's really about conservative vector fields. It's really about conservative vector fields. That's what this is all about. And you go, what's a conservative vector field? It's a conservative vector field. It's a vector field so that you get it's equal to the gradient vector of some f. So hey, I want to make sure. Everyone, is the derivative of this with respect to uh, y equal to this derivative here with respect to an x? Are they equal? Mm -hmm. Yes, they are. So what I'm saying is I can take off these question marks now. They are equal. Take that question mark, this vector field is conservative, and this is what I can write. Now, we haven't done this in a while, but you'll get used to it. That's what I mean. The vector field, big F, with the arrow over, is equal to the gradient of some function. There is some potential function that exists. This exists. And I'll put a smiley face. We just got to find it. There is a potential function that exists where you take the partial derivatives and you get these. So did anyone see that? I wasn't sure if I could do this or not. Just staring at the problem. I had to investigate. And the only way I investigated was by doing this. Okay? Now, can you help me find the function? You go, how do you do that? Oh, we gotta integrate. So we gotta do partial integrals. What's the integral of this? And I gotta integrate that with the, because it's in which component? The x component? Mm -hmm. What's the integral of that with respect to x? x, y. x, y. Then I'm going to put a plus. I need you to integrate this component here. It's in the y component, right? I need you to integrate that with respect to a y. So that was the integral of that with respect to x. I need you to integrate this with respect to y. And what do you get? Same thing, actually. Oh, you get the same thing. So I need you to tell you something about this method. When I'm trying to find a potential function, if you get any repeats, of the same expression before, you toss out all repeats. Do you notice that already emerged? So to find your potential function, what you'll do is, every time you get a repeat expression, that's a repeat, it's as equal to this, you keep the first one, but you toss out all the ones that repeat over and over again. Oh no, and I just did integrals, so I guess I should put plus constant c, right? The book likes to put constant k, I'll put constant k, you know, like a 5. Now, would you check it? Let's check to make sure we did this right, because it's easy to check. Is the part, this is what I'm getting, the function of x and y is x y. Is the partial of this with respect to an x, that letter? Yes. Mm -hmm. Is the partial of this with respect to a y, that letter? Yes. Yes? So that's why we're saying this is equal to the gradient of some potential function. And when it comes to evaluating a line integral with that vector field, it's going to be a piece of cake by this theorem. Look what we're saying. We're saying you can bypass doing all the antiderivative stuff. All you need is that function that we found, and we can plug in the numbers of it. So this is a rock and roll cool theorem. But I have to emphasize, it only works if your vector field is conservative. Okay, so call, see all these words? I wanted to write out all the words from the textbook. See all the words on here? The key is, you're like, is the vector field conservative? If my vector field is conservative, I can apply the fundamental theorem. And then we'll work the problems. Because it's going to be easy math. This is all we'll have to do. Here, call this the endpoint. F of endpoint minus F of initial point. How about that? That's what we'll find. F of endpoint minus F of initial point. In terms of some back. Alright? Now, come over here. Is this vector field conservative? That one was. Because it's all about whether or not the vector field is conservative that you can apply the fundamental theorem of line integrals. 
The reason I haven't even given you a problem yet, everyone, to evaluate a line interval, because I want to make sure the only way you can use this thing. Do you notice that that is not a big F, that is a delta. The only way you can do this is if the vector field is equal to some gradient function. And how do I know that? We've got to see whether or not the vector field is conservative. For a vector field conservative, it means that I can write this. It's equivalent to this. So how do you figure this out? There's a quick way. Some of you might go, I'll just integrate to see if it works. I don't think that works every time, although it's not a bad idea. Look, watch. I'm going to integrate to see if it works. What's the integral of that with respect to x? Here, I'll put my question mark. Maybe I can do it. Uh, what's the function of x and y? Let's see. What's the integral of that with respect to x? Negative y, x. Negative y, x. Plus, what's the integral of that with respect to y? x, y. What happened? With zero. Zero. You see, this isn't working, is it? But I want to give you a quick. You could do it, you could look at it, explore it that way, but the best way to find out whether or not a vector field is conservative for a two-dimensional vector is to do this. Is to think of this as a one. You're possibly, question mark, in fx, you're possibly in fy, and what did Claire Rose do, I'm saying? That fxy had to equal one. And if these are not equal to each other, the vector field's not conservative. It's a quick check. That's what I'd like you to do. Okay? So what's the derivative of that right there with respect to y? What's the derivative of that with respect to uh, letter x? Are these equal? No. No. <laughs> this vector field is not conservative. So rather than doing this first, we should look at it that way first. So don't do this. But if these check out, then go find a potential function. Although I've had students before who go, I just do this every time. I'm like, okay, be careful though. This is a fast, super way to determine whether or not your vector field is conservative. So what are we going to do? How am I going to evaluate a line integral if that's my vector field? You've got to do it directly. You would have to use 16.2 technique. You would have to go into the f.dr and do all of that. We did that in the last section. Wasn't that bad, was it? But if your vector field is conservative, it's like, cool, rock and roll, you can roll. Cool. So, hey, I want to do the first question. Um, well, I'll get to number one and two. I just want us to look at this problem here. This is number five. Hold the back. So I'll get all this out of the way. They want us to evaluate a line interval. Alright. What's the line interval number five? <coughs> and when they wrote this, they want us to evaluate that. That's called a line integral of a vector field. By the way, do you recall this finds work? Hmm. So I just want to point out this finds the work. The work done by the vector field. It's called a line integral of a vector field. They want you to evaluate this. Alright, evaluate this line. And they can do a vector field. The vector field is x squared y cubed and x cubed y squared. Cool. Okay. What's the curve? That c represents the curve, right? You call these line integrals. They're really curve integrals, aren't they? How about some curve? Well, what's c? c is the curve represented by, they've got a R T equals T Q minus 2 T, comma, 2 Q plus 2 T. Okay, and you've got to go from what T values? Zero. There's a curve, there's a vector field. We got to evaluate this line. Um, could I do this like last section? We're now in section 16.3. Could I do this problem directly? Absolutely. And you know how to do this, wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. um, that is the x component, that is the y component. But I would get f composed of r t dot r prime t. But I don't know if you can notice, that would be a lot of math, wouldn't it? Good, you all can see this. Just think of f 
There's F composed of this. That's the X component. And that's the Y. F composed, you'd have to plug that in there, square it, plug this in here, and what? Cube it. Same thing over here. And then you'd have to dot that with an R prime of T. I don't even know if we can do that in there, right? At least find the exact answer. So what we're going to do is we're going to investigate something. Is there a way, way, way faster way to evaluate this problem? I know they didn't write it, but boy, is that vector field conservative. If the vector field is conservative, this is all we have to do. Okay? So, we go off, we explore this. Is this vector field conservative? So I'm like, hey, you, are you conservative? I don't know. We got to investigate. We got to look at it. Question mark? I don't know. So, this is like some potential what? Maybe it's a potential fx. So i got to put a question mark here. I don't know if this really exists. Because I'm putting a lowercase f, that would mean the real f exists. And you're a potential what? Question mark? You're a potential f y. What must hold true for this to be a conservative vector? fx y equals f y x. fx y must equal f y x. And if it's true, it's going to be an easy problem. If it's not, we're like, crap, we got a tough find an equal. <laughs> Let's see. Is fxy, I'm talking function of xy, the second partial root equal to fyx? And it probably, I don't know, is function of xy equal to fyx if those are potential fx's ones? If so, this is a conservative argument. What's your this with respect to a y? x squared, 3y squared. Okay, 3x squared, y squared, very good. What's the derivative of this right here with respect to x? 3x squared, y squared, are they equal? Yes! So what does this mean? Yes! So what can I write? This is the best part. I'm going to do it right now. All this means 